Here's your wrestling news for December 18th, 2020. And your headlines for today include WWE Books Inferno Match for TLC Pay-Per-View Bray Wyatt Reacts WWE Confirms Title Match for TLC Pay-Per-View Otis Clarifies Reports About Heading Back to the WWE Performance Center Vince McMahon is looking to shake things up again this Monday on Raw. Interesting segment announced for WWE SmackDown this week. Alexa Bliss reveals reason why she is absent from WWE TV. Two current wrestlers suffered major injuries this week, out of action for four to six weeks. Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase's son admits guilt in embezzlement case. WWE makes top AEW prospect signing public. AEW wrestlers yelled at over spot on Dynamite, Shaquille O'Neal's AEW angle likely to be changed, and more. We're kicking off today with this Sunday's WWE TLC pay-per-view, and a huge stipulation has been added to the card. It's been confirmed that the Randy Orton vs. The Fiend encounter will now be what's being described as a fiery inferno match, as the company is taking Orton burning down Sister Abigail's shack to another level. The last time fans saw an Inferno match was at Armageddon 2006 when Kane set MVP ablaze, and given the slightly different name change, we'll have to see if there's any differences to the stipulation. Funnily enough, Wyatt debuted on WWE's main roster in a similar fiery fashion, as at SummerSlam 2013 he defeated Kane in a Ring of Fire match, which allowed superstars to win by pinfall. Wyatt has wasted no time in playing more mind games as he sent a cryptic tweet aimed at the Viper. In his post, Wyatt said how this is all a circle and that their ending was just another beginning. We're not quite sure what to make of this comment, but said that the angel with burnt wings is waving you home and that Orton can't kill the angel. If this Sunday's match is a true inferno match, then the only way to win will be by burning your opponent and we'll have to see how WWE pull off such a legitimately dangerous match this Sunday in their brand new Thunderdome. This Inferno card isn't the only huge addition to this Sunday's show, as a title match is back on the card. On this week's SmackDown, Sasha Banks and Carmella had their SmackDown women's title match that was booked for TLC, but given the DQ finish, fans will get a rematch. WWE have confirmed that, quote, the rematch is on, indicating that what fans saw last Friday was the original match booked for the pay-per-view. Though the Staten Island Princess didn't leave the Thunderdome last Friday a two-time women's champion, she got very close, and it may be just a matter of days before boss time comes to an end. Speaking of TLC, it's been reported that Charlotte Flair is the odds-on favorite to team with Asuka this Sunday, and now a WWE advertisement may have spoiled that reveal. When a graphic was posted advertising the Thunderdome's virtual seats for this Sunday's show, the person who made the graphic picked an image from TLC 2018, which just so happened to have the Empress and Queen sharing the ring. It's kind of hard to see the two unless you zoom in, and that night saw Asuka be crowned the SmackDown Women's Champion, beating both Flair and then-champion Becky Lynch in a TLC match. It's always possible that the person behind the graphic just picked one of the many photos from the TLC pay-per-view since its introduction in 2009, but it's still interesting that they chose this particular image. Now, earlier this month, we reported how several big men in WWE, namely Keith Lee, Otis, Omos, Dio Madden, and Dabakato, were sent to the Performance Center to refine their skills after Vince McMahon reportedly threw a fit at the level of their in-ring work. Fans were shocked by Otis being on the list as he was once a favorite of the boss, and now he's given his views on what's happening and the sessions led by Adam Pearce and Drew Gulak. Yesterday, the ex-Mr. Money in the Bank sat down with Ryan Satin of WWE on Fox and explained how these classes work, saying, I think it's always been there. I don't know how to explain this. It wasn't like we were told this and that. The Performance Center is a tool for us to get better. If a big man wants to come up to me and wants to work on stuff or, you know, vice versa, we're always working. That report was kind of funny. We're never not working, especially now when we don't have live events, so we can't really get our stuff out. It's just bottled inside. We're not getting that stuff out there, so we'll find more and more ways to get in the ring. Nothing beats a crowd, and that's one thing I miss to this day is that crowd, man, feeling that rush from there. The acceptance, especially my favorite town, Milwaukee? Good lord, yeah, Milwaukee. We're just not getting it out so much. But now it's time to get better. 
There hasn't been set dates, there hasn't been set anything. It's just like when you want to come in, brother. You know what I mean? I'll talk to Braun about something, so me and Braun will do curls for about 30 minutes, and then we'll talk about something over here. So it's always been there. I don't know why it became a big report gimmick, but yeah, I don't know. The way Otis speaks about it, it sounds like people are making a big deal out of nothing, though he could be just towing the company line by downplaying this controversial story. But what do you think? Do you believe Otis is being honest, or is he covering up? Let us know in the comments below. Clearly, Vince McMahon likes things his way, though he's not immune to changing things up if he needs to. After this week's record low ratings for Raw, it's being reported that the chairman is once again looking for out-of-the-box ideas which could commence on next week's show. It's no secret that much of what happened on this week's episode was written specifically for the chairman, but the declining ratings have been blamed on the creative staff. People backstage are walking on the proverbial eggshells even more than usual nowadays, and it certainly sounds like a big change is coming. Earlier this week, we reported on the creative team being asked to make lists of underutilized stars, and if the chairman does want some sweeping changes, that could be good news for those listed like Cesaro, Angel Garza, Chad Gable, Carmella, and Peyton Royce. From Raw to SmackDown, as tonight's show will be the go-home episode for TLC with an interesting segment in the works. Ahead of the December 23rd Slammy Awards, Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn is hosting his own Sammy Awards on tonight's show. Odds are that Big E will get involved somehow as WWE continue to work towards a title match between the two, and don't be surprised if the reigning IC Champion takes home all the Sammys tonight. Now Alexa Bliss hasn't been around WWE TV for a while lately despite being a focal point on Raw thanks to her alliance with The Fiend. Although it's no secret that she was recently filming content for the reboot of Punky Brewster, that isn't the reason for her disappearance, as when asked on Instagram by a fan, she said that she's on vacation, one that was booked months in advance. This explanation came under a picture of Bliss and her fiancé Ryan Cabrera, as the dark goddess of WWE is clearly enjoying her time away from the ring and with her future husband. NXT Next and a series of high-profile injuries have rocked the black and gold brand. This week, Rhea Ripley suffered ear trauma and skin disfigurement during her match with Tony Storm and even ripped her earlobe during the match. Ripley also injured her ear during a match with NXT Women's Champion Io Shirai recently, as this is an ongoing problem she'll need to address. Cameron Grimes is also feeling the hurt, as an injury means he'll be out of action from four to six weeks, which is being explained in storylines as due to last week's attack by Timothy Thatcher. A four to six week return window would bring Grimes back in time for the 2021 Royal Rumble after PW Insider reported that he's undergone surgery, and an impressive showing in the 30-man match could mean a call-up on the road to WrestleMania. Now, earlier this year, we reported on Brett DiBiase, who was involved in a huge embezzlement case in Mississippi, and now the son of the Million Dollar Man has admitted guilt. Anna Wolf of Mississippi Today reports that Brett DiBiase has pled guilty to making fraudulent statements, with his luxury stay in drug rehabilitation allegedly paid for with welfare dollars. Described by the state auditor as the largest public embezzlement case in Mississippi history, this charge deals with DiBiase receiving $48,000 from the state's Department of Human Services for work he never finished. DiBiase has agreed to help the state in remaining cases, and whilst he's also presented $5,000 in restitution, that's only a small chunk of what he'll owe when he's sentenced at a later date. AEW news as the company had its sights set on Ben Carter, the 22-year-old prospect trained by Seth Rollins, but despite an AEW appearance, fans won't be seeing him in the All Elite promotion. During WWE NXT UK, it was confirmed that WWE has signed Carter to a deal, with a promo airing for the young superstar, which included an appearance by NXT general manager William Regal. Carter himself tweeted about how his dreams of being a WWE superstar and at just 22 years old, he'll have plenty more years in the ring to make even more dreams come true. Losing out on Carter was something AEW didn't want, and that's not the only issue facing the company. Recently, Jim Ross made it clear how much he hates big dives to the outside, saying wrestlers will gather like quail and wait for the quote, leaping idiot who never wins with the dive. 
JR also criticized that AEW stars no longer sell DDTs and super kicks, moves that were once finishers, and after Brandon Cutler took a jab at JR's comments, things have turned ugly backstage. Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Radio reported that AEW stars were yelled at backstage over such spots, so a change in wrestling style might not be too far away for AEW. Or AEW now as there's already plans for Sting's long-term future in the company. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer discussed plans to put Sting with Darby Allin as a means to get Allin over, and the plan is that associating with the icon will in turn elevate him to a much higher level. Even before the Stinger joined, fans were comparing the two wrestlers, and this may be exactly what's needed to help elevate the current TNT champion into a higher position and perhaps the world title picture down the line. Sting's arrival in AEW is perhaps the biggest signing for the company since Jon Moxley debuted, but Tony Schiavone is already looking for the next big names. During the Dynamite Post show, Schiavone said he wants Gallows and Anderson in AEW and took a swipe at Impact Wrestling, saying the Good Brothers currently, quote, work for a shitty promotion. Gallows and Anderson may be on AEW TV sooner than we think, as they've aligned themselves with AEW World Champion Kenny Omega on Impact TV. And with next week's Dynamite already taped, having the Impact Tag Champions on AEW would be a huge way to end 2020 for both companies. Although it may be a matter of time before Gallows and Anderson are on AEW Dynamite, all plans for Shaquille O'Neal are now in the air. That's due to Brandi Rhodes' recently announced pregnancy, as it means she won't be wrestling for at least nine months, which means all plans for her against Jade Cargill are on hold. With the rumored plan being for Shaq to be in Cargill's corner or maybe a mixed tag match with her, we'll have to see how AEW works around this situation, as that cup of water thrown over the NBA Hall of Famer will presumably be Brandy's last major piece of offense for quite some time. Back to WWE now, and the main event of NXT's New Year's Evil has been set. After Kyle O'Reilly got the win over Pete Dunne on this week's show, it means that O'Reilly will get another shot at NXT champion Finn Balor when the two collide on January 6th. O'Reilly pushed Balor to the limit the last time they faced, breaking the champion's jaw, so we'll have to wait and see whether the undisputed star can get the job done this time with the gold on the line. Speaking of NXT champions, Kevin Owens captured that very title mere months into his WWE debut, but recently, a story went around that he cried after he was told he'd be brought in as the new Mountie. That said, when Fightful asked Owens, he denied shedding tears, as he was confident that Nick Eugene Dinsmore was ribbing him when he told him about the Mountie gimmick. Dinsmore apparently came up with the prank after discovering that the original Mountie, Jacques Rougeau, trained the prize fighter, and although Owens wasn't fond of the idea, it wasn't something that brought him to tears. And we're ending today with The Rock, who's reportedly worth over $320 million and could make you a pretty penny as well. Recently, a rookie card of Dwayne Johnson during his days playing football for the University of Miami sold at auction for $13,988. And given that only 50 cards like this exist, it's easy to see why they're so valuable. The 24-card sheet that included the future People's Champion was handed out during the Orange Bowl, with many getting ruined by rain and poor weather. So if you've got some old football cards hidden in the house, keep an eye out for a young Brahma Bull.